Okay, so in this one, you're gonna learn how to use Spring Profiles to apply different configurations in different environments. Let's go. So if you look here, you have a configuration class, and this is a database config class. So at configuration on the top tells me it's a config class, and it's called database config, so no surprises what we're going to find in here. So if we look inside, there's two beans. There's a data source bean here, which is called git dev data source, and it has an app bean annotation and an app profile annotation with a string dev in it. If we look at the second one, we have another data source bean. Uh, this time it has app profile prod on it, and the method's called git prod data source. So ultimately what this represents is the same data source configuration, but one for a dev environment and the other one for a prod environment. So if we take a closer look, each of the methods prints out what it's configuring. The first one is a H2 database, which if you've come across it, is an in-memory database. And the second one is configuring a Postgres SQL database. Now this assumes that you'd wanna use H2 in dev and Postgres in production. Actually, I'd suggest using the same database in both, but this is a bit of a contrived example to show you the power of profiles. So essentially, git dev data source is used when we specify the dev profile and git prod data source is used when we specify the prod profile. But what happens when we don't specify any profile? Well, in which case we would be using the default profile, in which case neither of these beans would be used. So how do we specify a profile? Well, there's a number of ways. Let me show you the first one. So let's open up a terminal here. Perhaps the easiest way to run your application in development is via your build tool. Now we're using Maven for this one and I don't have Maven installed on this system, but we do have the Maven wrapper that comes along with any project that we download from the Spring Boot Initializer. And this was downloaded from the Spring Boot Initializer. So we can then say Spring Boot Run and this will run the application. Now I'm not going to specify any profiles off the bat so I can show you what the output looks like. Okay, so we're up and running and everything started up fine. The reason for that, by the way, is because I have the H2 in-memory database on my class path and the Spring Boot auto configurers have picked that up and configured that by default for me. However, let's take a little look at the output. So if we scroll up here to the top of the output, we should see which profiles we're using. And we can see here, we have no active profile set. So we're falling back to one default profile. It's called default. So this is what happens when you don't specify any profiles. But what happens when you specify a profile? Now I'm going to jump straight to specifying the prod profile because that's the one that's most different from our default configuration. Okay, so we can see here that we have a D flag and that D flag is spring hyphen boot dot run dot profiles equals in this case prod. You'll see some different keys used a little bit later. So we're gonna specify the prod profile to run. Let's run that application. If you're eagle-eyed, you did see it print out it's configuring a Postgres SQL database. Let's scroll right up to the top through all of these stack traces, and that's expected. We'll come on to that in a moment. Go all the way to the top. Okay, you can see here the following one profile is active, and we have prod. Scroll down here, and we can see that we're configuring the Postgres SQL database, and it's starting and everything's fine, and it blows up. And the reason is we don't have a Postgres database running, so let's get one running. There is a Docker Compose file on here. So let's flip over to a different, there we go and I'm going to run docker-compose up. You can run this with the dash D flag to run it in the background, but I'm just gonna have it running on a different terminal window. And the database system is up and running and ready to accept connections. So let's go back here, we'll start up our application and prove that we can connect to the Postgres SQL database. Okay, and we're up and running. So by specifying the profile prod on the command line there, we are able to specify to use the prod configuration, in which case at profile prod, any beans annotated with that would be used. In this case, to connect to the Postgres SQL database and not the in-memory H2 one that we have. So where do we go from here? Well, there's, let me show you the other ways that you can specify the profiles. Now we're running via the command line at the moment, and we were able to pass in a D flag but there is another way of doing it. In classic Spring Boot fashion, you can specify an environment variable. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to type in spring profiles active equals prod, and I'll remove the D flag. And if we do connect to the Postgres SQL database, then it's because it's picked up that environment variable. Let's run this. Okay, it's connected absolutely fine. And if we scroll to the top here, we can see that the following one profile is active prod. So that's the second way you can provide it via an environment variable. Let me show you the third way. Now to show you the third way, we're going to have to package up our application and get hold of the jar file. So let's do that. 
Okay, so we now have that jar file. So I'm gonna go Java, and then I'm gonna type in a different D flag. Now this is going to be the equivalent to that environment variable that you just saw, which is spring.profiles.active equals prod. And then we'll say dash jar, specifying the jar, which lives inside a target, and it's called profiles demo. So when we run this, it's gonna pick up the active profile from that D flag that we passed in. Note the key is different from the one that we use on the Maven command line. And we're up and running and it's connected and we scroll to the top here. We can see configuring PostgreSQL database. That's a dead giveaway. The following one profile is active prod. So that's the third way that you can provide the uh, profile to your running application. Let's take another look at that class, shall we? So these profiles we've got at the moment here, we've been specifying the particular profile that these beans should run in. Okay, so in this case, we have at profile prod to say that this bean should be using the prod profile. But you can actually do the opposite. You can say, I want this bean to run in every profile except for. So if we were to, for example, change from prod to exclamation mark dev, this is simply saying, I want this configuration to be used in every profile that isn't dev, which in this case is prod, but could be a many other things as well. So if we go back to our command line, so if we run this with the profile prod, we should expect the prod configuration to still be used because prod isn't dev. We can see it's connected absolutely fine. If we scroll to the top here, oh, there's it, configuring the PostgreSQL database. And we can see the active profile is prod. But if we were to, I don't know, give it something completely random, we would still expect that prod configuration to be picked up now because we're saying in every profile except for dev. And again, it's connected absolutely fine. Scrolling to the top here, configuring PostgreSQL database, but our active profile is which is still not dev. That's one way of specifying the profiles, but we've still done it on the individual beans. We can actually apply it to the class as well. So in order to show you that, I'm going to have to remove the conflicting beans. So we'll just comment out that one. So the only thing contained in this class now is what we know to be the prod configuration. Scroll to the top here, and then we'll put profile not dev on the class and we'll rerun our application. And we should see it still connect to prod because the profile that provided, which was still is not dev. It's connected, going to the top here, configuring PostgreSQL database and there we go. The wow, I wonder what the uh, closed captions is picking up for that. So that's an example of using at profile on the bean, on, on the method declaration, but also on the class declaration as well. But there's more to the story. You can also use it on component declarations. So let me show you some components here. Hiya, quick interruption. So I'm trying to make software engineering as accessible to as many people as possible, and I need your help to do that. So if you found this useful today, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out. And if you think you know somebody that could benefit from this content, why not share it with them? I'm sure they'll thank you and it will make me very happy. Thank you so much. We go over to the service, we have an interface and that interface is greeter. So it, it just greets it like, hello there, hi. So this <laughs> greeter interface has a single method, which is greet, which returns a string. So that string is the greeting and it has a few implementations here. So the first one, which is the default greeter returns simply hello. The formal greeter returns how do you do? And the informal greeter returns, hello, mate. You can notice that they have different at profiles on the top here. So they're all services. So they're all subclasses of at component, at service. So that declares them as a bean, a candidate for auto wiring, and then also any dependencies would be auto wired into this class. And then we have this at profile. So the one on the default greeter says not formal and not informal. On formal, we have the profile formal. And on informal, we have the profile informal. So by specifying the different profiles, we'll get to specify which implementation of Greeter is used in our business logic. Now the eagle-eyed ones amongst you have already noticed, if we scroll to the bottom here, we already have hello being printed out. And what was the, oh yeah, it was that random profile we specified for that because it wasn't formal and it wasn't informal. But if we were to, I'm going to replace that for prod, do a comma, and then type in formal, because you can provide more than one profile. We should see it connect to the PostgreSQL database, but also give us a very formal greeting. How do you do? Scroll up, configuring PostgreSQL database. And if we scroll right to the top, there are two profiles active, prod and 
informal. Very good. And let's try out the informal one while we're here. Hello, mate. So that's how you would use profile on components and the subclass of components, in this case, at service to control which bean, which implementation is used just via a string that you pass in on the command line or an environment variable if you're choosing to do it that way. So there is more to the story though. So, so far I've showed you configuration happening in, in Java code. So the Java configuration, for example, this class here contains Java code, which configures our application. But if we were to comment this all out, and scroll down to our resources directory here, just to make that a bit larger. We have three configuration files. We have application properties, which is completely empty. We have application hyphen dev, which has commented out configuration for the H2 database, the in-memory one, which I can now uncomment. And if we go to application hyphen prod.properties, we can see that there is commented out configuration to connect to Postgres SQL. So you'll notice something about the names of these files, right? So application hyphen, name of profile dot properties. So when Spring Boot starts up and you provide a profile, by convention, it then looks for configuration files which go along with that profile and there will be the ones that will be used. So in the case of the dev profile being provided, application hyphen dev dot properties or application hyphen dev dot YAML would be the configuration file used. In the case of prod, the prod one, and the case of the default, then application properties would be used. So when you specify a profile, in this case, for example, dev, then it would be combined with whatever configuration it would find inside of application.properties. So to prove that this works, let's, well, we've already commented out all of our Java configuration, so that can't be used anymore. So let's go down here and we will cancel this application running and let's type in prod and we should expect this to pick up the prod configuration from application hyphen prod.properties that's the only place that the postgres sql configuration currently exists and we should expect it to connect to the postgres sql database See how it goes okay it has connected absolutely fine there we go postgres sql dialect absolutely fine there and that's perhaps the clearest example that I can give you because the H2 in memory database, like I say, those auto configurers can get in there and just make things work. It's almost too good in that respect if I was going to demo it. So that is it picking up the prod configuration. If we were to, I don't know, let's mess up the password and then restart the application. Should expect this to fail. There we go. Error correcting bean, entity manager factory. It was unable to connect to the database because the password was completely made up. So that's just a very brief overview of the Spring Profiles. They allow you to run your application configured for different environments simply by passing in a string, either on the command line or via an environment variable. So if you imagine you've already built your application into a Docker container, being able to change the mode that it runs in simply by passing in an environment variable is massively, massively powerful. And there we go, Spring Profiles. As per usual, I've committed this code and it's up there on GitHub. So I leave a link below, which you can use to access it. Now, if you want to get a little bit more into how Spring uses databases, then do check out this tutorial where I take you through Spring Data JPA, which is how to connect to a database and then use Java objects to interact with it. No SQL. I'll see you over there.